All right. Ready to dive into some of those uh, embarrassing English mistakes? You know the ones, right? The, uh -huh. the ones we've all made, maybe more than once. Oh, yeah. Those slip ups that make you want to just disappear. I know them well. Well, today we're going to break them down, see what's up with them. We've got this great podcast, English Mistakes Everyone Makes and How to Fix Them. It's hosted by this guy, Zach. Okay, cool. He uh, actually tells this pretty funny story about a student, right, who accidentally introduces himself as boring instead of bore. Oh, no, that's rough. I can only imagine. Total cringe moment, right? But that's why we're doing this deep dive. We're going to unpack like five of the most common mistakes that uh that zach highlights in his podcast and i'm thinking you've probably encountered a few of these yourself oh for sure definitely everyone's been there so let's just jump right in with that boring versus bored mix-up zach says this one it's it's like top of his list he says it's all about confusing adjectives with uh what do you call them past participle right past participles could you break that down a little bit i mean what's the deal there yeah so bored is how you feel it describes your feeling so it's a past participle like I'm bored by this conversation. Hopefully not this one. Oh, no, this is riveting. But then boring is an adjective. So it describes something that causes boredom. So like the conversation itself could be boring. Ah, OK, got it. Got it. So mistake number two is one I know I've made saying things like he don't like coffee just rolls right off the tongue. Right. It does. Yeah. So natural. Why is that wrong? So that's subject verb agreement. The verb in a sentence has to match the subject in this case. He is singular, so the verb also has to be singular. So it's, he doesn't like coffee. Oh, yeah, those pesky grammar rules. All right, number three. I have 25 years. I remember cringing when I first heard someone say this. It sounds so strange in English. It does, right. Yeah. But it makes more sense if you think about the speaker's native language. For example, in Spanish, it's tengo 25 años. Yeah. Literally, word for word, it's I have 25 years. Huh. So it's like a direct translation that just doesn't quite work, huh? Exactly, yeah. Okay, so that leads us to mistake number four, the dreaded double past tense. Things like, I didn't went there instead of, I didn't go there. Yeah, yeah. I always kind of chuckle at that one, you know, why do people make that mistake? It could be they're trying to emphasize the past tense, you know, like how some languages put more emphasis on the past yeah. tense. Or maybe it's just that they overgeneralize the rule that verbs change in the past tense. So maybe just like a little too much enthusiasm for the past tense. Yeah, exactly. OK, last mistake on Zach's list. Can you borrow me your book? I feel like this one mixes up two words that sound super similar. Oh, yeah. Borrow and lend. This one trips a lot of people up because both words deal with, you know, temporarily taking something. But the key is who is giving and who is receiving. Right. So what's the right way to say it? Can you lend me your book? Borrow means to take something temporarily, but lend means to give something temporarily. Gotcha. That makes sense. Zach made this point about, you know, sometimes we get so caught up in just memorizing vocabulary that yeah. we kind of forget to pay attention to how words are actually used. Mm, absolutely. It's not just knowing the meaning of a word. You have to understand how it works in a sentence, you know, like its function and stuff. So it's not enough to just know the word. You've got to know how to use it. Exactly. Yeah. Well, those are Zach's top five common English mistakes. Before we get into why they happen and how to fix them, I'm curious, have you ever made any of these yourself? I'm sure we all have. It can be frustrating you know, when you make those mistakes, but it's definitely a learning experience. Yeah, we've all been there. It really is. It can be a good learning experience, I think, those mistakes. And one of the things I think is fascinating is that a lot of these common errors, they actually stem from our native language. Yeah. It's like our brain is trying to apply the rules from one language onto a totally different one. And sometimes it just doesn't work. Right. Yeah. It's like trying to fit a square peg in a round hole. I remember Zach mentioned this with the I have 25 years mistake. Uh -huh. He said it's a direct translation from Spanish where it actually is grammatically correct. It is, yeah. Tengo 25 años translates directly to I have 25 years. Yeah. And it's not just Spanish. A lot of languages actually use the verb to have to talk about age. Huh. So it's no wonder this is such a common mistake for people. It's almost like our brains are hardwired to think in a certain way based on like, you know, our first language. Yeah. But how do we actually fix that? I mean, are there strategies that we can use to kind of overcome those deeply ingrained habits? Yeah, for sure. Zach shared some great tips in his podcast. He emphasized the importance of immersing yourself in the language, like 
as much as possible, right? Yeah. You know, like listening to music, podcasts, even eavesdropping on conversations. Okay, I'm all for eavesdropping as long as it's not creepy. Right, exactly, exactly. But seriously, the more we kind of expose ourselves to the sounds of English, I think the more natural it becomes. Right, it trains your ear to recognize the patterns of the language. So then speaking it correctly becomes a lot more intuitive. That makes sense. So listening is good, but we also need to practice speaking. Right? Yeah. Even if it's awkward at first. Definitely. Yeah, practice is key. I used to be terrified to speak English in public. I was just so scared of making a mistake. I get it, yeah. But Zach actually su suggested repeating like correct sentences out loud like over and over again, almost like a language workout. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think that's a great approach. You're training your brain and your tongue to work together. Mm. It's like learning a dance move. At first, it's clunky and awkward. Right. But then with practice, it becomes more fluid. Right, exactly. So the more you practice, the more confident you become. Yeah, right. Exactly. So we're all human, though. Mm -hmm. We're going to make mistakes. And that's where Zach's third tip comes in, keeping a mistake journal. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. Every time you make a mistake, write it down. And then write down the correct version of it. So you're learning from the mistake. You so know? you're not just acknowledging it. You're actually doing something about it. Yeah, you're actively learning from it. Okay, but is there more to it than just writing it down? Yeah. Well, the real key is to try and figure out why you made the mistake in the first place. Were you translating directly from your native language? Or um, were you overgeneralizing a grammar rule? Yeah. Or was it just a slip of the tongue? You know? Oh, so it's like being a detective, right? Exactly. Trying to figure out like what led to the crime. Uh-huh. And the more you understand about why you make certain mistakes, the better equipped you'll be to avoid them next time. Makes sense. It's all about self-awareness, right? Yeah, totally. Okay, so, but what about those of us that maybe need a little extra support? Zach mentioned finding a language partner or even a tutor. Yeah, for sure. What do you think about that? A language partner or a tutor can give you really valuable feedback, especially when you're feeling a little stuck. They can point out your mistakes, offer personalized advice. Right, it's like having a cheerleader, right? Exactly, someone there to support you and celebrate all your progress. That's great. That's great. I love that. So, you know, even with all these tips and tricks, the most important thing is just to be patient, right? Absolutely. Be patient and enjoy the learning process. Right. It's not about being perfect. It's about the journey. I want to go back to something we talked about earlier about mistakes being opportunities. Yeah. You learn more from your failures than you do from your successes, right? How do we shift our mindsets to see mistakes as something positive, like not something to be ashamed of? That's a good question. Well, I think it starts with realizing that making mistakes is just part of learning. Everyone makes mistakes. Yeah, like learning to ride a bike. You're going to fall a few times. Exactly. But each time you fall, you learn something. And it's the same with learning a language. Yeah. Every mistake is an opportunity to learn. So to recap, we've explored these five common English mistakes. We've talked about why they happen and also how to fix them. And we've talked about how important it is to be patient with yourself and find a supportive community. Yes, very important. We've also talked about how we use language differently in different situations and how to adapt. But before we wrap up, I wanna kind of pose this question. What advice would you give to someone who wants to take their English to the next level? That's a great question. I think it comes down to two things. Practice consistently and be willing to step outside of your comfort zone. So what does consistent practice look like, you know, for language learning? It means making English a part of your daily life. Yeah. Even if it's just for a few minutes, listen to a podcast on your commute or watch a movie in English, you know. Yeah, those are good ideas. Okay, so then what about stepping outside of your comfort zone? What does that look like? That's all about pushing yourself to use English in situations that might make you feel a little nervous, like um, maybe ordering food at a restaurant or asking for directions, or even just starting a conversation with someone you don't know. Yeah, that would be challenging, but also rewarding, I think. Absolutely. Each time you step outside of your comfort zone, you'll become more confident. That makes sense. That makes sense. It's like anything, the more you practice, the better you get. Mm -hmm, yeah. And that kind of brings us back full circle. Mistakes are a key part of the process. It's absolutely. So by using those mistakes to learn, we can become better English speakers. For sure. Okay, so before we completely wrap this up, I want to leave our listeners with a challenge. Okay, I like it. It's a great challenge, and I think, you know, everyone should try it. But before we wrap up this whole deep dive, I want to go back to something that Zach talked about. 
He mentioned how our families can sometimes reinforce like bad language habits. Oh, for sure. Have you ever noticed that? Yeah, absolutely. Families have their own way of talking. Right. And sometimes it's not exactly like proper English. It's just what makes them unique, you know? Right. It's like their own dialect. Yeah. I think Zach used the example like some families will say, I ain't got none. Yeah. Instead of, I don't have any. Yeah. It's grammatically wrong, but it's so common in some places that it just becomes natural. It's like you're learning a new language just within your family. Right, exactly. Yeah. And it's not even just grammar. Mm -hmm. Sometimes families have slang, you know? Right. Or expressions that no one else understands. Yeah, yeah. It's like a secret language. Totally. But it makes you think, how do we balance that? Like yeah. the family talk and, you know, correct English that you need for school or work. It's tough. I think you just got to be aware of how you're using language. Mm -hmm. Like we wear different clothes for different occasions, right? Yeah. You wouldn't wear a baseball cap to a job interview. That's a good point. Same as language. You might talk more casually with your family. Yeah. But then at work or school, you'd use more formal English. So it's like code switching. Exactly. Okay. So that's a great point. And it kind of highlights what we were talking about before, you know, about being patient with ourselves as we learn English. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a process. It really is. And remember, even native English speakers make mistakes. Oh, all the time. Language is tricky, you know? Yeah, it really is. So to wrap this all up, we've learned about these five common English mistakes that everyone makes. We've talked about the reasons behind them and some ways to fix them. We talk about being patient with ourselves, finding a supportive community. Right, very important. We even talked about how we use language in different situations, like with family versus at work. All great stuff. So any final thoughts? I would just say, you know, Embrace those mistakes, mm. see them as opportunities to learn, and never be afraid to ask for help. I love that. Learning English is a journey, and we're all in it together. <laughs> That's all the time we have for today's deep dive. Thanks for listening.